Today's lecture or lesson is going to be Newton's Third Law, and a lot of it's nuances, so most of you guys should hopefully know it by now that Newton's Third Law is for every action. <laughs> there is an equal, but, whoa, but opposite reaction. Now, what might that mean? Well, the thing, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Equal, ugh, but opposite <laughs> reaction. It's really not coming in very well today. This is the new computer and it's first video being made with it. That's not what's supposed to be there. Whoa. Reaction. All right. Enough said with that. So for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. But what does that truly mean? Well, let's take a look, guys. It really means to me that all forces come in pairs. So that means when you push on the wall, the wall is going to push back. Every force, it's not, you cannot produce one force by itself. You're going to have to produce two forces. And those two forces are always going to be equal but opposite. So when you, and I guess I'll have to make a red planet Earth, when you hang out on the planet Earth, so here you are, you are a person on the planet Earth. When you are standing, you're very big. You're massive. You are a uh, titan. Now, what you have to realize is this, is that you produce a force of gravity. The, the Earth produces a force of gravity. I'm going to put it beside you. That pulls you down, down into the planet Earth. But you also produce a force of gravity that pulls the Earth up. And these two forces of gravity are going to be interesting. They're going to be equal but opposite. So for every force, guys, you're going to have an equal but opposite partner or a pair. So this is where I really want to stress every force comes in a pair. Now, let's imagine that, uh, let's go to some other kind of interesting circumstances. Let's erase this. Let's say now, let's say just for fun this weekend, uh, you are going to climb a rope. So here's a rope, and we're going to draw you trying to climb that rope. So uh, here is your head, here's your body, here's some legs. Wow, that leg looks, okay, that looks good. And let's save your hands above your head. You're holding on to the rope. Okay, so you're going to hold on to the rope. And let's say this rope is uh, attached to some surface up here. We have like a, a building. Hopefully it doesn't look like fire. It shouldn't look like fire. It's like, a, it's like a, the ceiling of a building or whatever. So let's see what's going to happen. Where are our forces in this situation? Well, first off, you should know that gravity, and I'm going to put everything off to the side, gravity is going to pull you down. Gravity pulls you down. So that's one of our forces. But remember, every force has a pair. So let me, I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to take a look. You are actually, in this process, you are pulling the Earth up. There's the pair. There's the pair, right there. So not only do you produce the force of gravity pulling the, pulling the Earth up, the force of gravity pulls you down. So there's the pair. Everything must have a pair, guys. Now, the next thing is this. You are being held up by something. What holds you up? And I'm going to put it right beside this force. It should come from a, a, a shared point, but it's a little hard to draw in this particular program. Now, what pulls you up? Well, we talked about this briefly in class. Equal but opposite, as long as you're hanging from this rope, uh, equal but opposite to this rope is going to be tension. Tension is the force produced by a rope, and it's what's going to keep you suspended there. But remember, guys, for every force, there's an equal but opposite force. So there has to be at the very end. And when we draw tension, guys, we usually draw them from the end point. So we draw a tension here and a tension here. So there's a tension here at the very top that pulls the ceiling down. So the rope pulls you up, and you will actually try to pull the ceiling down. And in fact, if the ceiling was very weak, you could maybe like rip the rope out of the ceiling. Like let's say if I tried to hang on to like a light fixture at a restaurant this weekend, I could maybe pull that off the ceiling, you know, because I'm 
you know, a big guy. But we've got some other forces here as well. And I mean, guys, this is where, like, forces can get very, very crazy because now this rope that you're hanging from, it would rip the ceiling down. So there's got to be another force up here that holds this up. And that's true. You're going to have, in fact, uh, what we might define as a normal force in this in this situation. A normal force is going to... Um, be up here and it's going to be very interesting but it's going to be the ceiling is going to have to produce a force that pulls the rope up and we'll just call that a normal force it may not technically be up to ask mr lee what what he considered this to be but i would say that to keep this from going down you'd have to have some kind of normal force And that normal force would be the the connection between the rope here. Now, where is that pair? Well, that pair uh, will define where this pair comes from later. But uh, as we can see, just focus on our first four forces we drew. Everything has to have a pair that's going to uh, maintain and match up with its uh, corresponding other pair. So every force, guys, I really want to stress in this class, every force is going to come in a pair. <laughs> I, uh, as I'm talking to you, I just spit on my screen, and I'm trying to wipe that off. If you notice, that that's what's uh, delaying me from moving on. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's scroll down and look at some uh, interesting situations. Now, I always really, really, really like writing these sentences because I think it really, uh, and I'll say really about eight more times, it really helps defining things. So, when uh, let's say this is Mr. Shaw, who knows who it is. Uh, this is Mr. Shaw, and when Mr. Shaw goes to shoot his gun this weekend, you know, just for fun, I go out to the woods and shoot my gun at random objects. That's what us, Mr. Mr. Shaw, and other hillbillies do. Fantastic things. Um, so now what we will see is this, is that the gun is going to uh, shoot the bullets, right? It pushes the bullets to the right. Now, but as the gun pushes the bullets to the right, the bullets are going to push the gun and the person who's attached to it to the right. Did I, did I misspeak speak there? Well, once again, let me just stress this again. So the gun is going to push the bullets to the right. Let's write this down. The gun. Up. Oh, no, please do not do that. No, stop. The gun. Pushes the bullets let me be very specific I made a mistake to the left and I don't understand why it keeps doing this the left the bullets push the gun to the right. So that right there is example that I, and I really stress this in class that, that you should have these two sentences written and I should capitalize the first sen the letters of my two sentences but these two sentences guys they really really help you refine what Newton's uh, third law is and you really need to be able to clarify what's going on and then this uh, these two sentences are very very critical in helping us formulate like ideas of what is taking place. I'm going to stop right there. Hopefully this video is informative. Please come to class with some questions guys or send me an email.